morning we'll be looking at um spellings in English. Spellings in English. How to spell English word. Spelling is one of the aspects of the jam examination which you're going to encounter during the forthcoming exam. Right? So you need to learn how to spell some words. Okay, so that on the day of the exam, if any of these words appears in some of your questions, you will know the right answer to pick. As a learner of English, you are learning English as a second language. Remember I stated earlier, Ron, that English is not your first language. English is your uh, second language. Your first language is either Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, or any of the native languages we speak in Nigeria. So you, as a learner of English, we have to learn everything that is required in English to be, number one, competent in the use of the language, number two, to be proficient in the use of the language as well. Remember that we talked about common usage errors, all right, of what classes of English, you know, the word classes we use every day will discuss the common usage errors. That was a previous topic. Now, as you go about using English, whether in writing or in speaking, it is required of you and expected of you to be able to spell words correctly, all right? And there are, there are techniques, there are um, rules you have to follow. There are rules that can guide you to number one, know how to spell word in English. But there's something you should ask yourself, which is the question I normally ask students. Have you ever wondered why English is the only language we have? in big spelling competition in any other language, you only find that there is a spelling competition held in English. Correct word spelling is an integral aspect of jam use of English. I've stated that before. Being able to spell words used in daily conversation is very crucial for a learner of English. As we noted before, a lot of words used in English today were borrowed from either French, Spanish, Latin, German, and Greek as their etymology, and therefore still retain their spelling pattern and pronunciation from their home country or nativity. That is what I need you to know, all right? I told you before that Many of the words we use in English are actually not English in origin. Those words originated from either French, Greek, Latin, Spanish, German, and any other languages that the world make use of. But English borrowed some of these words and then enshrined it in, in the English dictionary. Because these words find their way in the English dictionary, we will have to learn it. And in learning them, we have to learn their spelling pattern. These words, since they are not English, have their own spelling pattern, all right? And the spelling pattern of the word maintain or retain their expression, retain their spelling pattern from the original word where this word comes from, all right? And so in you learning to spell words correctly, number one, you should know that spelling words in English is either from British English, American English, Australian English, Canadian English, or New Zealand English. If you can remember, I did tell you that these five countries I've mentioned are the owners of the language. They are first speakers. They are first users of English. English is native to them. English is native to the Americans. English is native to the British. English is native to a Canadian. English is native to an Australian. English is native to New Zealander. 
Okay, so these five countries use English as their first language. You and I are using English as our second language. All right, and so in spelling, there, there is variety. All right, there are varieties in spelling as well. The Americans spell words differently, some words differently from the British. And the British spell some words differently from the way an Australian will spell the word, all right? But you, as someone who is writing an exam, the only spelling you have to master, all right, and be consistent in, in its usage is the British English spelling. English word spelled according to the British usage, all right? Now, if you want to adopt, because many a times, Nigerian speakers of English make you American expression. Now, when you are writing, you need to be consistent in the type of spelling pattern you adopt. Whether you're using American English, the American English spelling should be consistent. The moment you start your paragraph, the very first thing you want to write, if it's American spelling that you want to be using, ensure that you started using American spelling from the beginning of your write-up to the end of your write-up. Let it be that every word, every lexis you're going to use, all right, in your, in your write-up conform with the American English uh, word use. Let it not be that there's going to be a mix-up. Sometimes you spell using the American word or you spell using British expression. It won't be nice that way, okay? But when you, are, when you adopt the British English spelling pattern, ensure that you're consistent. Ensure that you remain with that. So the beginning of your spelling to the end of whatever it is you're writing should be British. If you, are, if you adopt America, let it be that what you're writing, you're saying, your expression, your phrases, clauses, your sentences, whatever it is you're saying in your speech or your writing should be consistent with the American way of speaking and writing, of course, spelling words. You understand? Now, what are the tips? What are the rules of how can you improve in your spelling? How can you improve in your spelling? Number one, one of the things you can do to improve in your spelling is to make use of what we call mnemonics, all right? Mnemonics are, you know, uh, linguistic devices that is used in order to remember something easily. You know, it's not, it's not very easy to remember information, often time. Okay, oftentimes it's not easy to remember some pieces of information, but when you make use of mnemonics, you will be able to remember a particular word. Mnemonics are things that, that sound like rhyme. Okay, you use something like rhyme to be able to remember a particular word you need, you don't want to forget. All right, so make use of mnemonics. Mnemonics oftentimes or most of the time helps you in you know, retaining information as regards spelling. So number one, use mnemonics to remember your word, okay? I, I've said that mnemonics, sometimes there are rhymes and songs, all right, that could help you to remember um, the word you want to spell, all right? Mnemonics are also like acronyms, okay? Mnemonics mm -hmm. are also like acronyms. Sometimes, you know, in today's world, where we use some words that are shortened for a longer one. You know, today, LOL stands for laughing out loud and so many other, um, so many other words, okay? Like that, that exists. You can use that for you to be able to remember the word you want to spare. So use mnemonics. Mnemonics will help you a lot in remembering what. Number two, learn spelling rules. Learn some spelling rules. All right. Sometimes the best way to learn is to know the rules, because I told you before that English is full of rules, though there are exceptions to those rules. By learning a few of these rules that guides you, that helps in 
uh, you remembering the words you want to spare, it will help you greatly. All right? Sometimes you ask yourself, why does the why in friendly turn into I in friendliness? All right? You know, you, we have the word friendly. Now, that word friendly ends in why. Why is it that when you want to spell the word friendliness, the why in friendly turns into I? These are rules. There are rules guiding that. There are words that begin with suffix. Others begin, there are words that end in suffix. Why others begin with, with prefix? So those prefix, suffix, rules attached to words are what inform their changes in the spelling and pronunciation pattern. Okay? Another example is trying. All right? Trying. Someone can be trying. But that same person tries. All right? Trying changes. You see the Y in trying, we change to tries. Okay? So, take note of that. Number two, I said, learn some spelling rules. There are so many rules that is that are involved when it comes to spelling. Number three, what you can do to be very good at spelling is to learn commonly misspelled words. Commonly misspelled words. And those are the words we are going to learn today. There are so many commonly misspelled words in English. And we are going to learn the correct spelling and the wrong spelling. I've divided them and put the correct spelling and the wrong spelling. Of course, you're going to see the confusion that comes in them. But when you follow the tips I'm giving to you, you master these tips, you practice this, you practice these tips. Of course, when you see a word, you already know, oh, this is the this is how this word uh you know can be spelled. You understand? All right. So master learn commonly misspelled words. And I'm going to give you so many of those words in English that you have to, you know, learn. The next thing you can do is to make a list of words you have trouble spelling. There are so many words you have trouble spelling. So how can what can you do to improve on those words you have trouble spelling? Very simple. Make a list of them. Those words get your jota. Example, when I say vacuum, all right, normally I just said vacuum. If you're not conscious enough, you won't understand that, that there are double U, U in two places in that word. That vacuum is spelled V A C U U M, all right? So there are words like that, such as vacuum in English that you've encountered which give you trouble. What do you need to do? Simple. Make a list of them and constantly check the list you've made to see how these words are spelled. Over time, they'll be registered in your ear, in your brain, in your subconsciousness. Whenever you're speaking or writing, you remember that, oh, this is how this word is actually spelled. All right? The next point you should uh, take note of is to look up the origins of words in the dictionary. This is important. Look up the origins of words in your dictionary. The dictionary is still a very reliable source when it comes to spelling and pronunciation. All right? So look up the origins of words in your dictionary. Okay? As I said before, the words we use in English are either French, German, Spanish, all right, um, Greek, or Latin. Just a few of the words we use in English are actually English. So because these words were borrowed from these other countries I've mentioned, they retain their spelling and pronunciation pattern. That's the reason words like restaurant, by spelling, it is restaurant. But by pronunciation, it is restaurant. Restaurant. So all the words that are misspelled, I'm going to pronounce all of them 
so that you see how they are pronounced. Okay? You see how they are pronounced in English. So take note. The origin of every word retain the pronunciation and spelling pattern of that word. So that is what you need to take note of. Make use of your dictionary. Look up the meaning of the word. The next thing you can do in order to improve in your spelling is to do what I call chunking it out. All right? Sometimes words are difficult to spell just because they are long. You understand? There are some words that are so long in English. And before you can try to spell them, and also because they contain some mixtures of letters, okay? So many consonants come together to form these words. All right? So in such cases, you can use the chunking, chunking method. Chunking is when you separate the word into chunks. You separate them. You syllabify them into syllables. That way you'll be able to, you know, um, spell it. Example is, if I say you spell the word embarrass, embarrassed, embarrassed, or embarrassment, all right? You may not really know, okay, the, how many R's are in embarrassment or how many S are in embarrassment. But by the time you separate it, all right, you separate it, you syllabify it, you use syllables to divide it. Of course, you will get it. We get it correct. All right. The next thing you can do is to sound it out. Sound out the words you're trying to spell. This is this, this is a spelling trick that is often taught to little kids, you know, little children. We tell them to sound out the word. Because it's so simple, all right? If you're not sure how to spell a word, say it out loud, very slowly. Then write down what you hear, all right? So that way it, it can help you. This me method can also help you to spell word correctly. You can even draw a picture to represent that word. That's one of the things you can do, all right? You can draw a picture to represent that word. You can also... You can also play word games, all right? You may be wondering, how do I play word games when I have jam to write and all of that? Remember, I told you that the classes we're having is not just for you to write jam and pass and go. It's for you to be proficient. It's for you to be, to be, to be competent in the use of English to improve in your usage of English. So you can do any of these things we've mentioned. Number one, for you to improve in your spelling skills. One, use mnemonics. Two, learn spelling rules. Three, learn commonly misspelled words. And we are going to learn them today because the exam you're going to write, these words are going to be containing them. These commonly mis misspelled words are going to be containing them. The next point is make a list of words you have trouble spelling. And the next thing you have to do is to look up the origins of words in the dictionary because the origin of word retain the pronunciation pattern, all right? And number two, I said you can chunk it out by separating it, separating longer words, syllabify those longer words. And the next point is that you can draw pictures, all right? Draw pictures and you can check pronunciation. You can check pronunciation and also you can as well a uh, play word game, can play word game. So look at my screen now, look at my screen now. These are the mispronounced words in English, right? These are the mispronounced words, misspelled words in English. Take a look at them one after the other. So I say study this, I have A, then you can see correct spelling and you can see misspelling, the incorrect spelling of each of these words. You need to be conscious enough, like you have to pay adequate attention for you to be able to determine, decipher the difference in these misspelled words. So pay close attention. These are Some of these words are the words we use on daily basis, but they are misspelled. If you're not conscious enough, 
if you're not disciplined enough, if you don't pay close attention, you wouldn't know when you spell some of this word wrong. So look at this word accommodation. Let me also add, because I reminded you that there are American spellings, there are British spellings, we have Canadian spelling, Australian spelling, and uh, New Zealand spelling. But the spelling you and I are you know, often familiar with is the British spelling and American spelling. Then I said, if you're using American spelling in your writing and speaking, please stick to American spelling in writing and speaking. The moment you start writing, and is American word you first used. Make sure you use that American word throughout your writing and speaking. If you started with British spelling, ensure that you stick to that British spelling in writing and speaking. Take note. But in this exam you're going to write, note that it's only British spelling that is going to be acceptable, that's going to be accepted by your examiner. So look at the word accommodation or rather accommodate, you can see how many C's are contained and how many M, letter M's are contained. Look at the word, look at this word, achieve, and look at the, the wrong spelling. This acquaintance, look at the wrong spelling. This is acquitted, look at the wrong spelling. Advisable, look at the wrong spelling. Aggressive, aggression, look at the wrong spellings. Annoyed. Anointed, anointment, you can see the correct spellings and the wrong spelling. Argument, you can see this. Assassinate, assassination, you can see auxiliary, you can see bachelor, balloon, battalion, you can see the wrong spelling. Take note of how many letters. That is the reason I gave you the rules guiding spellings in English. I say you should learn when I was talking about. Um, tips on how to improve your spelling, okay? So take a look at this, benevolence. I pronounce this as benevolence, all right? Not benevolence, but beni, benevolence. It's like pronouncing benefit. Other than it's benefit, 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 benefit. Remember, the origins of this word are either French, Greek, Spanish, German, all right? And they retain their pronunciation from their original native land, okay? So the pronunciation do not change because it has been imported into English. Beezer, billionaire, look at billionaire, billionaire. So you can see how to spell billionaire. Look at, look at broccoli. Business, business, calendar, camouflage, 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 cabrito. You can see I had to put the two here, cabrito, American. You can see cabrito for the British, double T is involved. You can see Caribbean, you can see cartilage, symmetry, all right, changeable, chauffeur, chauffeur, a personal driver, a private driver, cigarette, cigarette, colleague not colleague, the way some people pronounce it, colleague, no, colleague, colleague, colleague. You can see the spelling of colleague. So you have to pay adequate attention, all right, for you to get this word correctly. It's just sometimes the omission of some letters that will make it either right or wrong, all right? So take note not to omit a particular letter that is meant to be in that word. You can see committee, committee, double M, double T, double E, conceive, conferred, all right, knisia, 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 all right, look at this, conscious, 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 all right, look at this, continuous, 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 not continuous. You know, because to mispronounce it continuous, the way it is spelled here in the um, misspelling column, because you pronounce it this way, that is the reason you write it differently. 
All right, or write it wrong. Look at this continuous, clearly, clearly, correlate, 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 correspondence, curiosity, deceive, defer, definitely, definition, not definition. All right, you hear some people pronounce this word as definition, not definition, it's definition, definition, definition. Definition, all right? All right? Definitely, did you get that? Desiccate, desiccate, all right? Desiccate it, desiccate it, and so on. Let's move on. Look at deterred, deterred, deterred. You can see single T and double R here, but the misspelled word is double T here. All right, deterrence, 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 deterrence to serve an ex as an example of something. All right, dilemma, dilemma, dilemma. And then dining a room, a table, all right, dissatisfy, dissatisfy, dissect, dissect, dissection, dissect. All right, this word is dissect, dissipate, dissipate. You dissipate energy, drunkenness, drunkenness, ecstasy, 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 ecstasy. You can see the wrong spelling. Okay? So take note of the wrong spelling so that you don't make this mistake. Look at the wrong spelling hmm? and see what actually makes it wrong. Look at embarrass. I didn't pronounce it as embarrass. It's embarrass. You have embarrassed, embarrassed, embarrassment. Okay? Embarrassed. Look at embezzle, embezzle, emphasis, emphasis, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. This is not English. This word is not English. It's French. So it's retained the pronunciation from its origin, which is French. So entrepreneur, entrepreneur, not entrepreneur. The way you will often hear it, you know, people will say entrepreneur, 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 all over the place. It's entrepreneur, 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 right? Let's move on. Look at envelope, surround or cover. Now look at this, envelope, a paper, a container for letters. So take note. Envelope used as envelope and vice versa is wrong. Envelope without the E at the end and envelope. Sometimes when someone is dictating a word to you, you know, when, when is dictation spelling B, that's, that's where you ask question to really know, all right? When this explanation of media is given to you, you know that, oh, this is what this word actually uh, mean this is the correct one I should spell. You can see that there's envelope with e and envelope without e, but the two are pronounced envelope, but their meaning differ. Look at the word earnest and look at another word earnest. Earnest as someone's name has e r n e s t, and earnest as to show seriousness is. E A R N E S T, all right? N S, which is a verb. This other one, E A R, is a verb. Y E R N E S T is a noun, is someone's name. So take note. Equipped. Equipped has a double P. Equipped. Exaggerate. 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 Exceed. Exceed. Exercise. Explanation, explanation, facsimile, facsimile, facsimile. That is something that resembles another thing, all right? Facsimile, look alike. Your handwriting, your exact handwriting, like saying calligraphy, all right? So take note, fallacy, fallacious, and so on. Fictitious, fictitious. Look at the wrong spelling of the word, 
Look at what makes it different. We have F I C T I T I O U S. All right. F I C T I T O U S. So the I is missing after the second T after the I. All right. So there are three I in fictitious. Okay. Look at the, the next word. Fourth, 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 and forty. Forty. Okay. Forty. Forty. This is how to spell the word 40, right? I've seen students writing F-O-U-R-T-Y in the place of 40. No, that's the wrong spelling, all right? So you have 40 as F-O-R-T-Y, not F-O-U-R-T-Y. Take note, financier, 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 not this other one, all right? Flabbergast, flabbergast, flabbergasted. Do you know that oftentimes students mispronounce this word? It's either because they don't see the spelling, how it is spelled, all right? Instead of saying flabbergast, they say flagabast, hmm? flagabasted. Have you not heard that flagabasted? Say, ah, I was flagabasted, just meaning I was surprised. You hear them say I was flagabasted, fla, like flagabasted. It's not flagabasted, like but rather flabbergasted, flabbergasted, flourish, florescent, florescent. Take note of this spelling of this florescent as light. All right, is it? I, I, I explained that here. Florescent, okay? Take note of the spelling. These words that we are learning this morning are the frequently used words by examiners. It, they often come out in exams, these words, to test your knowledge of spelling, of word spelling. So you have to learn them. Foreseeable, fundamental, glamorous, grateful. Please take note, grateful, not this. Not this. I've seen a lot of these in both writing, you know, especially in writing. You see student write G-R-E-A-T-F-U-L in the place of grateful. This is what you intend to write. G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L, grateful. You are grateful. You show gratitude. All right? So please take note of these words. Grievous, not grievous. Grievous, grievous, guardian, all right? Guerrilla, 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 take note, guerrilla, guidance, harass, heroes, hierarchy, hindrance, honorary, 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 okay? Take note, humorous, idiosyncrasy, idiosyncrasy, ingenious, all right? Please pay attention, ingenious, intelligent, now look at this, ingenious, honest. So you can see the difference. We have the word ingenious, which means intelligent. And then we have the word ingenious, which means honest. So you can see that the spelling of the two words is actually not the same. Inoculate, inoculate, inoculate. Take note, inocus. Inocus, intercede, interrupt, irresistible, eat. Look at this. Eat, possessive, like his, her. Eat, eat. Look at, look at, there's no apostrophe. So after the, 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 the before the S, there's no apostrophe. Unlike the second one, eat, all right? You have it is, it has. That's the meaning of this one. So take note not to spell them or use them wrongly. Now look at jewelry, American jewelry, British kindergarten, knickers, lampos, and later. Okay. Then you have latter and the meaning. Layers, liaison, layers, liaison. Look as you can see the two. Liaison, liaison, liaison. 
is not English, it's actually French. Look at the spelling, laisan, lollipop, of course, you know this, and so on. Okay, lose to when you no longer have something. And then you have lose, not firm. Okay, most time where you find this word, these two lose and lose is in comprehension passage. All right, ludicrous, maintenance, manageable, mathematics, millennium, millennia, million, millionaire. So take note of these words, they are important. Now look at this, mischievous, not mischievous. You often pronounce this as mischievous. It's actually mischievous. Mischievous, take note. Misogyny, misogyny, misspelled, misspelled, murmur, mysterious, mystery, narrate, necessary, new stand, no, no one, noticeable, all right? So, and so many occasion, all right? Occurred, occurrence, omitted, oppressed, oscillation, Overrun, paid, parallel, pastime, pavilion, peninsula, peninsula. So take note of this word. Take your time out to study them. Take your time out. I know this, this, this slide will be sent to you. Please, as they come, as you lay your hand on this uh, material, sit down and go through each of them one after the other. Learn these spellings because they are going to really help you in the exam, all right? And don't forget the rules I mentioned, the tips to guide you on how to use, um, how to improve in your spellings in English. That will be all for today. I'll see you on Monday uh, next week. Thank you so very much. Please learn those words as they come to you. As you get the material, learn them. Thank you.